Hi everyone, welcome to today's video. How are you? So in this video, we are going to show you how you can create a measure that imitates the sum ifs or average ifs function of Excel. So take note that you have to do this procedure if you want to create a measure, okay? Meaning you want to have this variable that you can drag around and it's like uh, implements a sum ifs capability. Take note that you can use or do a sum ifs just by using the filter options of your Power BI Visual. So just to demonstrate, I have here my data and already imported it. So I have the delivery numbers and then I have the from and then it to and then the price for that certain delivery. So if I want to just use a visual to implement a sum ifs um, function, then I simply have to produce a matrix table, for example, and then I'm going to drag in the from and put it in the rows. And then I'm going to bring in the price for my values. So I have this table over here, and this will sort of like act as a sum if for each of these um, countries. Now, another way to implement a sum ifs without creating a, a table or a matrix is, uh, let's say, by using filters. So for example, I'm going to bring in the card visual and I'm going to drag in the uh, price and put it in the only field for a card visual. And I can see here that this is the sum of the price as I can see here. But let's say that I want to make this visual only specific for, let's say, transactions from Japan. So since the card visual doesn't have any um, other fields that you can use to filter, you can just use this filter tool over here and drag or limit it only for Japan um, data or criteria. So I will bring in the from and drag it here in the filter on this visual option. And from here, I can just select Japan, check Japan, and you will see that I have implemented something similar to a sum if, okay, of uh, only if Japan okay, uh, transactions. But both of these um, measures or calculations used the method of dragging fields okay, or implied measures, meaning every time that I have to get the sum of Japan only, I would have to create a filter for all my visuals. But what if, I want to implement a measure that will that already has a sum if of Japan k data. So I want to get this k okay, number without the use of filter, and I'm, I'm going to use a card for that as well. So for this, I have to create a measure. So to create a measure, first I have to click on the table that will house the measure in, and then in that table I will create a new measure, so coming from the table tools and then click new measure. I'm now being asked to create a measure over here. So let me zoom this a bit. And let's say this one, this is my Japan uh, transactions, for example. And what I need to do here is I'm going to implement a calculate function. So the calculate function is like your sum if, okay? But take note that calculate itself doesn't really know if you're, whether you're going to sum or multiply, do an average or just count. So we're going to use a sum and then we're going to select the price. So we're saying here that we're going to calculate the sum of the column price. And if you are going to just do that, now let's bring in the card visual and drag this new measure that we have, the Japan transactions, uh, and put it in the fields. What I'm going to get is still 58.91, which is the total of my total transactions. It's almost similar to just using the sum function. However, the benefit of using a, a calculate function is I could implement criteria. So I'll first remove this and I will add something to my calculate function, I will say comma, and then I will indicate that the from field should be equal to that of Japan. 
So what I'm saying here is that I will calculate the sum of column price, but only if the from data is Japan. So I'm going to hit enter to update my measure. And now I'm going to drag this measure that I have, the Japan transactions, and I will bring it to my fields. And you will see that this one will pick up the same value as the one that used the filter, but this one can sort of like stand on its own without the use of filter. So that is the um, purpose of the calculate and sum function combination. Take note that the benefit, one of the major benefits of this is that you can also use something similar to average ifs or count ifs. You simply have to change the sum into average and you will get the average price okay if the transaction is from Japan. Okay. Now another thing that you can put here, let me just bring this back to sum, enter. And I also want to sort of like apply another filter. So let's go back here. And I want to get only if the two is from South Korea. So take note that I have transactions from Japan going to Thailand, but I also have two transactions from Japan going to South Korea. So for that, I'm going to implement another uh, filter. So if I'm going to do it in the manual way, I would have to drag another field, the two field, into my filter in this visual and limit it to just South Korea. So I see it's 12.26. So this is what I want to show up here as well if I'm going to adjust the formula that I have. So the Japan transactions, I will then update. And then I will put a comma and then I could put another filter such that the two field is equal to South Korea. So just like some ifs, you can have many criterion or condition okay, that you can put in the calculate sum function. And there you go. I hope somehow this sum will help you in, in improving your Power BI reports. You can now use the measure to do other things, like maybe you have another table with another measure that you need to multiply or get this value of Japan transactions and multiply it to another value, another table. So you can now have this measure that you can call anytime in another table. And that's it for this video. If this video somehow helped you, we appreciate a like, a comment, and a subscribe, and hit the notification button as well. Uh, it really helps us create more videos for you. But for now, this is it, and I'll see you in the next video.